What's up guys, welcome back to another episode here at Kibby Tech. Hope you enjoyed last week's video with the chrome truck here. I know I enjoyed it, but uh, let's see what we got going on in the shop. All right, before we head in the shop, we're outside the shop because we're completely out of room, but uh, we did a full race prep and shock rebuild on the Cop Cruiser. And uh, one of the guys is, we're building a new balance right now because the balance is all blown out. These tabs are all bent back. The grill was broken, that light was broken, the AC condenser was broken. I think he stuffed it in a hole and kind of just broke a bunch of shit up there. So uh, yeah, the light broke and then went through the AC condenser. So replaced all that stuff. Uh, sent the shocks out to Keith at KDM. He rebuilt all of them. And then we're, uh, next episode, we'll be shock tuning with this guy. So that'll be fun. Yeah, I went through this thing, a whole laundry list of stuff. The rear end was leaking, so rebuild on the hubs, hub seals, bearings. Uh, we did all new brakes all the way around. It had some smaller six piston wheel woods. So we went with uh, pretty much like the biggest off-road caliper that wheel wood has. Uh, six pistons all the way around so that now this thing stops amazing and we had an issue with the coil pack harness it, for some reason it just started to just pretty much not work and like explosions and fire would shoot out the exhaust so I could pretty much grab the harness with my hand shake it and then the truck would die so new coil pack harnesses on both sides for odd and even side new O2 sensor cleaned out uh, new fuel filters we're checking the fuel pickup in the fuel cell right now because I just drove to lunch and I came back around a corner and fuel pressure dropped and then it picked back up when I kind of straightened out. So now we're gonna check the fuel pickup, make sure that's good. But other than that, this thing is dialed, ready to go. Let's go to the back of the truck and see what we got going on back there. Look at that. That's dirty under there. All right, so you saw we took that panel off, which is kind of nice. It all just bolts in here. Uh, these are all nut serted with our fender washers hold that panel on. It's a, basically a floor for the spares and the jack and just we're gonna add a fire extinguisher and stuff up there. Took all that stuff off so we can access the fill plate here. So we're gonna check make sure this pickup for the fuel is uh, didn't get dislodged. Maybe when he stuffed it in that hole, maybe the fuel pickup or something moved in the cell. So we're gonna check that make sure it's all the way at the bottom in a corner where it should be. Make sure this thing's ready for shock tuning. It's always better to do this here at the shop than to be out in the desert doing this, wasting the shock tuner's time because your fuel pickup is not picking up fuel. And then you can't drive the truck and then you can't shock tune. Just a easy trip around the block to lunch led me to believe that the fuel pickup is uh, not picking up. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at, that was fucking solid. <laughs> <laughs> all right now back over here still not in the shop yet we got the the black truck which i believe its name is playa modelo so you can google translate that to figure out what that means but that's the name of the truck that was the owner came up with that name yeah here it is it just got back from tyler at american rap company they did a full ppf and window tint on the whole truck everything is covered in you know that clear protective film so it's on all the lights it's on the grill it's on the lights it's on the valance the whole clip one big giant piece the doors the bedsides uh, even like the bumper tube right here is wrapped in that stuff so just everything we can do just preventative maintenance just from getting scratches on this thing I don't think he's gonna take it in the dirt for the first couple of months because he wants to enjoy it in its freshness so I don't blame him uh, especially if you come over here and check out the interior. So that's all genuine Italian leather. We wrapped the seats, did the dash, the console, the door panels, the headliner, the visors, uh, the back wall. So everything, everything got done except carpet in this thing. Carpet just kind of gets messy anyway. So the Linux kind of a nice and rugged. Expert auto upholstery, Todd and his crew over there did the interior on this. and. 
They did an amazing job. So they took all of our like aluminum panels that we made. We made all this stuff out of aluminum. They wrapped it all. Like when you close the door, this lines up with the dash. So everything kind of flows really nice and the dash is welded in. So this is a tricky one for them to wrap the dash and all this stuff inside the truck without being able to you know remove it and do it on the bench i had a special request for the headliner i didn't want to cover the tubes and i didn't want five ugly bolts per triangle on the roof i think i just don't think that looks clean so they they made all these panels and so each triangle is a separate piece and you can't see the seam because the seam is underneath the center line of the tube pretty cool what they did there yeah back wall they made some extra panels kind of bolted them on back there Probably my favorite part is the seats. So these are Sparco seats and I've never seen anyone wrap like the hard shell. So we actually wrapped the whole seat and then redid the actual seat covers themselves and the, the padding and everything, the, everything was done. A lot of labor in this and uh, we're wrapping up cup holder right now. So we got something special coming for the cup holders. So that's why that panel's not there, but that panel will just bolt in. It'll have two cup holders and then it's done. Everything on this thing is 100% done, ready to go. Basically, once the cup holder's in there, you won't see this thing here anymore. So uh, pretty exciting. This one's been a, been a long time coming. I don't know if you've seen it on the channel for a while. Yeah, just every detail on this truck is just insane. Another cool thing, remember told you guys about the water tank we did on it and everyone asked what it was for, so. A hose hooks up to that, and that is a shower. So it'll have a full outdoor shower. Got that all plumbed in. All we need to do is get the shower head. So basically you just open that panel, pull the shower head out, hose off. And the reason for that is because the owner of this truck is a, a surfer. It's not like a professional surfer. He just does it for fun. That's what he does. So uh, he wanted a shower. So you know, you're down in Baja, down in Mexico, go surf somewhere, get all gross, get out of the water, hose off. Put your clean clothes on, hop in the pre-runner and, you know, go jam. Pretty cool, just another little feature that was uh, something a little extra. But I think it's about like a 20 gallon water tank, so. And it's kind of right above the exhaust, so you might get, you know, a nice warm shower out of it. Might help out, but uh, here it is. Fly a Modelo, or the black truck. <laughs> All right, over here in the machine shop, we are making a custom dash insert black thing for the chrome truck. So that's that. We'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So there it is, that's what uh, finishes the chrome truck. We made this little badge, the chrome truck by Kibby Tick for our buddy TJ. Stabin bros. There you go. He hasn't seen it yet, so by the time you see this, he will have already seen it. So, it's pretty cool. All right, back over here in the five axis, we got, uh, just another set of upper arms we're doing. So this is a 19 plus, yeah, 19 plus uh, GM 1500, two wheel drive, four wheel drive. Um, so we changed up a little bit, get, added a little more clearance in this area so you can run a different like backspace wheel. So you can get closer to like a five inch backspace instead of a four and a half. Uh, we added a bunch more clearance in here for some of the larger 3.0 aftermarket shocks. Um, and then obviously, you know, our standard uh, tool path upgrade so lots of surfacing and some cool tool pass on these guys and uh, came up with a new way to fixture them so we can uh, basically just put this in like this so this is all done uh, just in the vise to this point and then we came up with a new fixture to where you put it in like this and then when it's done you just pull out a complete part so you don't have to like clamp it to cut out the center section. It's all integrated and uh, we're not going to show you that because uh, then someone will just copy our idea. <laughs> we got some other upper arms over here. These are Tacoma upper arms and you can see this big uh, angle we did there. So we added more room on these as well for uh, some of the bigger shocks and resi hoses and stuff like that. So a bunch more room here. 
added the tool pass, and then these are, uh, this is all step one. So step two will come out, the finished part. We've been machining TRX parts for what seems like forever, but we've done, I don't know, 40 or 50 front kits and rear kits, and some are coming back from Anodize, a bunch already shipped out, and if you have an order in, you haven't got it yet, they're all done. They're all either at Anodize or in shipping. We also made some more shackles. Basically for Chevy 2500, but they fit on Raptors and F-250s and stuff like that. Basically anything with a three and a half inch spread, and I believe these are a seven inch eye to eye. Changed the program on this a little bit. Kevin updated it, added some different tool paths, and uh, just to increase efficiency on those. All right, let's go see what's going on in the fab shop. All right, back here in the fab shop, uh, pretty much everything's got a boatload of updates. We'll save some of that stuff for some later episodes. But uh, another one you haven't seen in a while is the Baja Bug chassis that you saw us building before. So now it's back on the table and we are finishing the back half. Motor mounts, trans mounts, rear shock mounts, rear arm pivots, and then this thing is gone. So basically it'll leave a roller like a non-tabbed out roller. You know, the owner can finish all that from there on his own. Uh, we got the motor and mock-up trans all mocked up in there. Built some plates to kind of bolt it into the fixture, make sure everything's centered and square. We've got a couple uprights in here so we can start the rear cage route around the back. Uh, already got the trans mounts in there. The rear tubes are in there. See, once all that's done, we'll be able to double shear the inner trailing arm pivot. And then same with this outer one, we'll be able to double shear that one once the rest of the cage tubes are in there. Yeah, we got the motor and trans at the angle that I like them at. We got the position front to back where I like it compared, you know, center line of the trans axle with the center line of the rear hub. Obviously this is way more bumped out than it will bump out. Got everything where I like it. And then uh, Chase is just working on that right now. Yeah, this one will be wrapped up soon. Over here, Dewey's working on another uh, Raptor bed cage. So this is all laser cut here on our laser. So all the tubes, all the plates, laser cut, all the all the plates are CNC bent on our CNC press brake. Bump tabs here located with a fixture plate right here. It's pretty cool. The front mounting point locates itself there. So everything's fixtured as how it would go directly bolt into the truck. So this takes a lot of the you know labor on the truck out of the equation so we could start pre-making all these parts before the truck even shows up or i think this one's actually just getting shipped out anyway so building this to ship it out and then we got a completed one over here i'll show you all right over here that's a completed raptor bed cage right there these are our new raptor rear frame rails so we actually cut the frame off at a certain point and then we slide these on and it kind of builds the whole back of the truck we found that this was easier than filling in all the holes and plating the stock frame which takes forever so we just laser cut, bend these up, weld them up, and then basically you get a whole new rear frame section with the notch in it. So you get increased up travel, you know, 40 inch tires and you're not bumping out, you know, a foot off the ground. You'd actually get some nice up travel, get the truck to sit at a good ride height. And with that, you get like new bed cage mounts, body mounts, a bunch of stuff goes with that. And that's all keyed in and integrated to the back half kit. So basically we have a fixture We'll put this on the table, we'll cut the back of the truck off, we'll kind of wheel the truck up to the table and just kind of slide it into place and then level the truck out and then just weld the whole back of the truck up and then everything will just bolt on from there. And then I think up here we got a couple of Raptor fuel cell cradles and then uh, Raptor rear bumpers, uh, Chevy rear bumpers. So yeah, getting a lot of parts stacked up for a lot of builds or parts that are already sold. Getting all this stuff kind of pre-made so we get the truck in and out quicker than just, you know, drop the truck off and then just start building parts from there. So uh, this will help a lot with the downtime. Bunch more parts up here. 11 to current Chevy 2500, 3500 long travel kit lowers, some spindles, shock mounts, center mount lower arms, our new Raptor long travel kit, 07 to 18 Chevy 1500 four wheel drive long travel kit lower arms here, ZR2, two-wheel drive spindles because we're going to take the blue ZR2, convert it to two-wheel drive, do our swing set steering, pro-am hubs, tube works rear end. So all that's going to go in that blue ZR2 that we built you know, a few years ago. Just kind of getting all our ducks in a row to get uh, all those builds kind of knocked out and get all these parts pre-made and just ready to go when the truck shows up. Bunch of updates over here on Dan's truck. Obviously the two things that were uh, we couldn't show you that were blurred out in all the other videos, those are gone. 
So that was the stout that went to SEMA for Ryan Turk. We've showed that a bunch on uh, my Instagram and stuff. Maybe just drop a picture right here. Then you can look at it. And the other one, we still can't show you what it is, but it's out getting some, uh, some body work done elsewhere. Dan's truck's coming along good. Got the front clip on there. Mini fenders are in place. And we did something different here on the mini fenders is we did a full inner fender here that blocks the front of the door and the door hinges. So that's all aluminum. And then we tabbed off of that to hold the mini fender. So like we've done before on like the cop cruiser, we made a panel in there, line X'd it, and that panel kind of blocks the airflow and dirt and rocks and mud from getting in the door hinges. And if you ever had a 99 to 06 Chevy over about 110 miles an hour, the in a pre-runner, the air kind of catches right here and it starts getting in the door jam and then your doors start kind of moving around. So trying to eliminate that with, with this and uh, it's proven to work like on the other trucks. So uh, nice detail and you don't get a bunch of rocks and mud and dirt in your door hinges. That's coming along good. The motor, we got the dry sump and everything all done on that. So motor's ready to get dropped back in do final fitment. We're making a new air cleaner assembly with like a big rectangle trophy truck style air cleaner. And then we're doing a, I believe it's a 2018 grill and lights on this one. So a little different from like the cop cruiser and all like corporate cruiser all have the same like 2014 front clip. We got all the hubs and brakes on it. Everything's been bumped out and clearance. So everything clears good. And then um, after we get that bug out of here, we're gonna put this back in the middle of the shop and tackle it. Ryan's over there finishing the new balance for the cop cruiser. The other one was a little little beat up. I don't know what he hit, but it uh, basically the whole thing was hanging off the front of the truck. So the bolts were still there, but this thing was like hanging down. So <laughs> it's something pretty good. So yeah, we got the OBS back over here. We've got the bedsides. Front mounts are all done. Rear mounts are just kind of, this is just tacked on right now until we we're gonna do the billet mount like we usually do back here. Bunch of up travel on this thing. It actually goes up two more inches from where it's at, but it's actually hitting right here. So if you notice these bedsides kind of droop right here. So we're probably gonna end up cutting this out. Take this and we're gonna flatten this back out to get to where the tire doesn't hit right here. So uh, we need that two more inches of up travel. You can see it's sitting on a couple blocks there. And if you notice the bedsides come way onto the cab this will get notched out so the window goes in normal and that'll get glassed in, but uh, kind of standard on these uh, OBS builds. Bedsides overlap the cab a lot because we shorten the wheelbase a lot. We got the beams buttoned up. I got to button up the knuckles. We're adapting those to inch and a quarter uh, kingpin. Well, it's not gonna be a kingpin. It's gonna be a big inch and a quarter bolt. I think it had an inch and an eighth kingpins on it. So we're going bigger. You know, it's got 39, so need something a little more than uh, the inch and an eighth factory style kingpin. But yeah, this thing's uh, super close to being a roller. And then D90, bunch of progress on this. We got the motor back. It'll go in next week. Uh, we'll start buttoning up all the tedious, you know, water lines, get the intake done, get the power steering cooler and engine oil cooler mounted up front. Got to get a custom intercooler from CBR, get that mounted up front, steering, and then this thing's off to powder coat. I'm going to go test drive the cop cruiser, make sure the fuel pump is good now. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the desert.